Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial. Today, I'll be showing you a technique on how to trace an image using the pen tool really quickly in Adobe Illustrator. For this example, I've chosen to use this image here of an apple. Um, it's a simple image, but it's got a nice little bit of detail here, so I'm hoping this will be a good example to demonstrate the technique. As you can see here to the right, once we are done, we will get a nice trace of the image with some nice smooth outlines. And I'll just zoom in to show you this here. And let's look at here. Lines are looking quite smooth. With a bit of detail here. Not too shabby. Okay, so later I will be showing you how I developed this shape and how I created the complete vector apple, as you can see here. I'll show you how I created the inner core, and I'll show you how I applied these lighting effects. There'll be a few um, gradients and, um, and some blur techniques here, and I'll show you all those later on. If you want to skip straight to this part, then I suggest you look in the description. There'll be a link in there taking you straight to this video, or there'll be another link at the end of the video. But if you're interested in learning the technique on how to trace an image, quickly in Adobe Illustrator, then uh, stick with me and I'll show you how. Okay, so back to the tracing. First of all, preparation. Let's address the layers here. Okay, so let's make sure this picture is on its own layer. So let's cut this, Command X, Control X on a PC. Let's uh, make a new layer here. Let's call that Apple body paste okay so let's make this 50% so I can see my stroke okay window transparency and let's make that 50% around 50% there you go so now I can I'll be able to see the stroke on top of that let's create a new layer let's call that Apple stroke and let's make our stroke black and I think that it's it we are good to go let's make a start okay so with the pen tool selected we're going to start tracing the object but placing nodes on all the curved areas try and think about little curved areas and land a little node on there. This will become clear later on if it's not entirely clear now. So I'm just gonna quickly click around the shape, clicking on all the curves, one there, one there, just quickly move around this apple, in there. And at this point you're probably asking what on earth am I doing? But it will all become clear in just a minute. Okay, and that's it. You'll then have something that looks a bit like that. Now, this like this <laughs> at the moment this looks nothing like what we want, far from it. But this is just the first step. The next step is to come over to our pen tool here and click and hold and move your mouse down to this convert anchor point tool. It looks like an upside down V. Now, when we've got that, we will want to come in close to the apple. Hang on a sec, I'm gonna zoom in. So we press Z, let's uh, zoom in a little here, zoom in, okay, let's get that tool up, and uh, you'll notice you'll have it when you've got an upside down V. When you move it over one of the nodes, you'll see that you can click and drag, and as soon as you do that, you're, you're starting to add curved data to it. Now. As we'll see that as we move around the shape, 
we're going to start to get some really nice curved data. Now, you'll find that you'll have to, you'll get these little nodes around the object. To control those, we can select the, the direct selection tool here, the white arrow. Let's click that, and we can, just, we can drag this node up here. Here we go, looking very nice. Now, I'm going to add curved data to all of these little nodes right here as we go around the object. Let's go. So as we go, we're just going to address every little node and add a little bit of curvature to every node as we go around. So all this detail becomes nice and curved. As we go around, look at these and see these, for example, these, these harsh points here, we can just sort of add little bits of curved data just to, just to tweak the smoothness of it so it doesn't look so harsh. Here we go, there's one there. It's going to add a bit of curvature there. There you go, that's nice, that's nice. Pull that one out. Pull that one in, there you go, it's looking very nice there, nice curve. And the good thing about this is because all the nodes are together, as you work across, they're all, they're all very seamless. As you can see with the process of doing these three here, as I, as I added the curvature to all the three nodes, it seamlessly joins them together, so that was nice. I didn't have to work too hard to achieve that. So I'm just going to keep working around the apple here. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm going to skip skip to further on now. Okay, I'm back at the top now with the apple. Just finishing off the final curves, giving this the last bit of curvature here. It's looking nice. Quickly select that white arrow, move that node up. Nice. Okay, back to the convert anchor point tool. Add in a bit of curvature here. It's quite nice. Go. There you have it. Zoom out. Yeah, so what we've got now is we've got that nice traced outline. Looking quite nice. Looking quite nice there. So once we've completed our trace, the next stage really is to just to tweak it and, and get happy with our shape. I mean, you know, how long did that take? Must have taken about five minutes and here we are. We've got ourselves an outline and it's looking fairly smooth. There's no real not not many bogus nodes in there. I mean, I'm I'm quite happy with that. I wouldn't really wouldn't really do much to that. I guess I could take take the um, direct selection tool and maybe maybe move some of these nodes around. But what's nice about it is because they've all got the curved data, and no matter where you move it, it's going to look it's going to look you know seamless. It's going to look quite smooth. So you know the rest is just tweaking. So we can move around the object and just have a look at it. Make sure we're happy and there's no real no real bogus elements there. That's what I like about this. That's what I like about the convert anchor point too, because you can be really discreet about it. You can be really discreet. And you don't have to worry too much. You don't have to work too hard. I think that's the main thing, not having to work too hard with this. So I'm just looking around, that's looking pretty smooth. I'm quite happy with this. Let's have a look at that. Maybe, maybe move this in a little bit. Yeah, add, add a bit more, bit more bite to the chunk of this apple. Let's add a bit more curve, curve to that. It's looking nice. Yeah, so I wouldn't really, wouldn't really do much to that. Okay, maybe, maybe that. I can, Tweak, keep tweaking nodes. Really, keep just keep I'll undo that. Just keep tweaking the nodes. Make it make it smoother. You can spend as long as you want doing this, but I think 
I think I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Right, let's have a look. Let's get rid of that apple. I think overall it's not not too bad. We've got some nice detail here. I think that's enough to go forward. So I think that just about wraps this one up. Well, in conclusion, I would say that the main benefits of using this technique are you don't really have to work too hard to get a nice smooth outline. I mean, you know, it didn't really take us much. And, you know, if we look a little bit closer, I'd say, you know, that's, that's quite a smooth little outline there. You can achieve a smooth result pretty quickly. And I find that you get a lot more control over the curvature of each node. You get loads of control because they're already predefined and you can sort of dive in there with the, you know, with this convert anchor point tool, you get really hands-on. I find it can be really satisfying when I use this technique. So, that's that. I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope that you can benefit from this tracing technique. Okay, so next up, I am going to show you how I took this shape forward and how I developed the complete finished vector apple. I'll show you how I created the core, I'll show you how I applied the lighting effects, just touching on some of the gradients, and how I created the drop shadow using some of the blur effects in Illustrator. If you're interested, click this link here now, and this will take you straight to this video, or you can find the link in the description. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Have fun! And I'll see you next time.